Let me show you how to work with custom control rigs that we've created ourselves in Unreal Engine Sequencer. Control rigs are a way to let us animate like in every other 3D program, animate in situ rigged objects. So it could be characters in our case, but it could also be anything else. And the beauty of it is that we don't have to adjust an animation sequence for that. We can use one and then make adjustments to it, but we can do so non-destructively. This is different from the approach that I've shown you a few episodes ago in which I showed you how to make changes to an existing animation sequence destructively. So this is not what this is. Control rig works a bit like this. So I've got a couple of characters here, Manny 4, which doesn't come with a control rig. So I've made one for him myself and we'll see how to do this in the next episode. And I've also got Manny 5 here, who does come with a control rig. So to do this, we need to have a level sequence that you create that up here with this icon, add level sequence, then you save it somewhere. And when you do that, it'll also store a reference to that in your level. I've got one here already, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go and select the one I have, head over to the details panel and open the level sequence. And here it is, it's empty right now. So when I use Manny 5, because he comes with a relatively fancy control rig. I can just go and track him here. I notice that I get switched over to new animation mode here. We were in selection mode a minute ago. And I also see that I have a new outliner here, I mean, my anim outliner that lets me access all these control properties that I didn't see before. So if I do the same with Manny 4 here, as you'll see in a moment, that doesn't happen. So we'll, we'll deal with him mainly rather than with him. But the principle is that I can now go and use this new asset that Unreal Engine has already provided for me. And if I go and set a keyframe on the first frame and then move forward to say frame 30, I can now go and make adjustments to this guy. So let's say the spine, let's go and move him forward and then you'll use spine two. Sometimes when they're difficult to select in the viewport, feel free to select them in the, in the outliner here. Let's do this and maybe his arms they need to come down and forward a little bit. So I can see if I can find them. This could be it. What, which, which one is this? This is the upper arm left. Yes, that'll, that'll work. So let's go and move that arm into here. And then we go and move that arm into here or something like that. And is that the arm? That is the upper arm. There we go, like this. And maybe we'll go and move them down like so. And then we'll use this arm again. Is that the arm? Well, you get the picture. You can go and move this now and my character animates. So that's great if you already have a control rig in place and if it's as fancy as this with your know, snazzy colors and that, but 99% of all cases, you're not gonna have that. So really you're gonna be in the selection mode and you're probably not gonna even have Manny. I'm gonna go and take him out. That's more like a demo that you can dissect and see what Epic have done so that you can maybe implement it in your own projects. So if I use my Manny here and track him on the sequencer, I see I stay in selection mode and there's no way I I can go and choose any of his bones to animate. For that, I need to have a control rig. And as I said, we're gonna see how to create one for custom characters in the next episode. Just a little preview here, this is what that looks like. So we're gonna be making this. It's a system that adds these control points to my figure and they are connected to the actual bones because bones as we see here, we can't select. So the control rig objects makes that connection between bones and something tangible that we can animate on the sequencer. So since my system didn't automatically open it, I can go and click that plus icon here and head over to control rig and choose asset based control rig. And then I'll select the one that I've made. And again, we're going to, we're going to do that in the next episode. So I'll select that. And then Unreal Engine switches me into animation mode. I can see these control points that look a lot less fancy than for UE5 Manny. And I can choose them from here or in the viewport if I can. So this is a principle and the good thing is I don't go into a different mode. I see my character or my object in situ together with other things. So if I wanted to animate him picking up a cup and putting him to his mouth or something or interacting with the environment, I can see the environment, which I couldn't do before. So then let's do a quick simple animation and then we'll see how to, how to save that out as an animation sequence and also how to override that as well. So I'm going to go and set a keyframe here on my control rig like that. And I'll go and 
enable the automatic keyframing. So that means if I go and move to a future point here like this and then make a change to any of these properties, then an, a keyframe will be created automatically for me. So let me go and just make him bend forward like I did before. I'll do that on all the spine points. And I will use the rotational controls and just the shortcuts that I use for viewport navigation. So the blue thing here means control and left and right mouse button together moves this. But you can also, of course, you know, do this in the viewport like this. And then maybe the arms as well. So as I say, I can't see these here. So I might go and find them upper arm left. Let's do that. Is that that's not the right one? Is that blue? Yes, blue it is. Perfect. I suppose that we need to do that on the upper arm right as well. Upper arm right, go move forward like that. And we should also, well, maybe that's enough. That's actually, that works, that works pretty well for me. <laughs> so I have this animation and to copy this keyframe over, I'll go to my next position, Alt, left click and drag to make a duplicate of this. And now Manny goes and exercises. That's fine. <laughs> so let's go and copy all of those and paste them in a couple of times so that it looks like we have a longer animation sequence. There we go. So I've made some changes and it looks like Manny is doing exercise. This is great. Let me go and save this out now so that we can apply it as an animation to both him as well as other characters so that we don't have to hand animate these things again. That works by going onto the control rig here and then right clicking. No, nope, sorry, I'm telling you a lie. Going onto my character and then I right click on this and head over to bake animation sequence. So this is going to create not an FPX, but an animation sequence inside of Unreal Engine for us that lets us go and apply that. So big animation sequence. I'm going to go and put it into animations here and we'll call that one Manny Exercise. And I've already got one, so that's perfect. I'm going to replace that. I'll leave all the defaults in place, export animation, and that is that. Let me go and delete my control rig now from the sequencer. And that means now Manny doesn't move anymore, which is fine. But what I can do now is hit this plus icon and then pick Manny exercise. This is the one that we've just made. And now he'll play back just like he did before with the added benefit that I can go and extend this further if I wanted to and have him, you know, do exercise for, for hours and hours on end. I can also apply it to other characters or I can retarget it to different characters. And that is, that is how we work with control rigs. Well, that's one way to work with them. There's also another way that lets us, I'm going to go and just undo the, the repetitions here. The other option is that if I wanted to override this existing animation that I have, say I have a walking animation and my character's hands are constantly popping into their sides, I can use a control rig to essentially bake this animation onto the control rig and then go and adjust things from there. Let me show you how to do that. So I'll just stick with this example and let's say this is my animation that I want to adjust. Maybe the arms need to be at the side here or maybe I want to move his legs or I want to turn his body or something. I can go and without a control rig in here, I can right click on Manny and go bake to control rig. And that means anything animation sequence wise will now be transferred to a control rig. I need to pick a file here. And once again, we have one, so I'll go and select it. Uh, you can choose to reduce the keys here or not. It doesn't really matter for my example, but it makes this slightly more readable or not. As we'll see in a moment, I'll go and click it and say create. And that now has put me back into my animation mode and I can see a ton of keyframes here. Lots of them. Thankfully, they have been reduced. Had I not done that, even the ones that don't contain animation would have had keyframes just to make sure, you know, this thing plays back properly. So as I can see, my animation still plays back, but now the control rig is in charge. And in fact, it has now taken on the keyframes here. I can prove it to you by taking out the manual animation here. And Manny still does exercise, which is awesome. So there's now two options that I have. One, and please don't do this, but one is if I open my control rig and I'm thinking here my spine controls, if I go to the uh, rotational yaw controls here, I want to make a change to this. I could go and open the curves editor here with that track selected. And I can see that this is what the keyframes are doing. Let's say I wanted to exaggerate the second 
movement here. I could go and grab those keyframes and then move them further up so that the value of this gets exaggerated. So that would be making a physical change to the animation that's currently on the control rig. So you can see he's going a bit deeper now than before. But of course, this is cumbersome. And if you're not into doing that with keyframes, then you know, you are totally forgiven because I'm not either. So he now goes and really strains one and then goes further back down. And you know, that's just with one bone. So you could obviously do that with other bones. But that's again, that's very cumbersome. And also it's destructive. I'm making a destructive change here. A better option, if I just go undo all that and come back out of my curve editor, a better way is to add a second track to my control rig, namely another control rig track that becomes an additive adjustment to something that is already in place. So this is on the control rig and I go and click this little plus icon. I have two options, absolute and additive. I want to use an additive motion so that leaves everything in place and just add something else to it. And that I should have done at the beginning. Take that out. So now I see that I have basically super confusing three control rigs here. And what this means, this is the actual control rig and this is a control rig track since I now have added a second track to it. So I'm going to go and rename this one. I'll call this one original animation just so that I know what that is. And this one I'm going to call additional animation. Uh, you can be more specific about that. If I wanted to make this a turning motion now, I could go and set myself a zero keyframe at the beginning here on the second track. And then I maybe go and uh, this is what my zero keyframe wants to be. So I'm going to set a zero one here and I'll go over here and maybe at this point I want him to turn. So I'll do this on the spines here going into rotation mode and I'll go and turn him over maybe with spine two as well and perhaps with spine three as well. So that sets me my automatic keyframes here. And now I can see that Manny goes down and up and then he turns and then he maybe goes down back here. That's once again a zero animation. So I want him to do that like so. And then he comes back up and at that point I wanted to go and turn over to the other side like this and then all the three spine bones in conjunction. So now he does this and then whoops, yeah, that is also not what I want. <laughs> this here on frame sort of 150, I'm gonna go and copy this keyframe, alt left click and drag that over here. And then he goes and does this. So then the only thing I want to change now is that up here, I might want his arms to be by his side already before he starts his thing. Well, I could go and make that change in my additional animations track, or I could go and do another one on top of here. I'll say another additive one. And that again gets this default name here. And maybe we'll be a little bit more specific. Maybe we'll call this one rotation or body rotation or something like that so that I know what is what here. And then this one is going to be start and end arms, just so that I know what that is. So I can go and have a completely new track that doesn't have millions of keyframes that I have to deal with. I have something completely empty that I can now go and override. So for this, I think I'm going to go and use, if I had controls, I can select them from here, but I'm going to go and say upper arm right, and I'll put that down to here. Actually, I, I should have not have done that because I don't have a zero uh, to zero this out. So like here, that needs to be a zero. So I'm just going to go and set an empty keyframe here that I can go back to because then here I want the arms to be flat against his body. I think that looks okay from the sides. It's just going to be a simple change on the other one as well. Upper arm. Oops put that down. So now, oops, that was a bit too much. I suppose clavicle could also get involved here, but you know, let's keep it short and sweet because it's just about the principle. So now he does this and then he does that and then he does that. And then at the end here, I also need to have that keyframe. In fact, these two, because here needs to be another zero keyframe. I'll go and copy that to here that between there and then nothing happens. And then I'll go and left click and drag this keyframe over to, whoops, <laughs> left click and drag to, oh, come on, buddy. Left click and drag this keyframe and paste it over here. So now Manny does exercise and we're using three different control rig tracks for this to layer this animation. 
And if that's a good animation, I'll leave that up to you. But this is the principle. And once again, now that we have all these things added up, let me go and head over to Manny's top node here, right click and choose Bake Animation Sequence. And that once again lets me have a proper animation sequence. Let me call that Manny Mega Exercise that I can apply to other characters. Uh, that is, of course, contains a space and that is, of course, a deadly sin in Unreal Engine. Let's go and replace it with underscores. Okay, export animation. Let's get rid of all my control rig animation here. Or in fact, let's go and bring in a second version of Manny. I suppose we could do that as well. In fact, I, I'm not too proud of this. Let me just go and get rid of the control rig altogether of all my three tracks and just bring in that animation that we had here, mega exercise. And everything is as before. And he can, you know, do his exercise and get animated. So that's how you work with control rigs. That's why they're practical. And the downside is, of course, that only the UE5 Manny actually comes with a pre-built control rig. If you buy assets from the store, they often don't come with a control rig. So we're going to see how to create our own for things that don't have it in the next episode. Stay tuned for that.